What is that? A modding in a minute guide? New Exalted Blade build. What do you think? <laughs> Picked it up from Overframe yesterday. Cute condition overload. That's Chromatic Blade, and my energy color adds heat damage. What? Why is the Umbro slot empty? I'm gonna put on Primed Reach. I'm just short on Forma right now. Very cool, Midscalibur. But that's nothing. Here. Look at that Incarnon enhancement and the combo scaling. Oh my god, it even has a Riven. Whoop! Ah, sh- Oh! Oh, sorry guys. Uh, was I interrupting something? Exalted Weapon refers to a special weapon in Warframe that can't be equipped, but rather is part of a Warframe's ability. The first Exalted Weapon came when DE decided that Super Jump wasn't a good ability, and in exchange for taking it away, gave Excalibur a new ultimate ability, Exalted Blade. After that, the name has been used to refer to any Warframe ability that summons a new weapon for your Warframe to hold, and a few that don't, but those are outliers that we'll get to later. Exalted Weapons are just as a base, such an insanely cool concept, right? Your frame having a super duper weapon they pull out in emergencies is just chef's kiss. And they're usually an ultimate weapon because, I mean, come on, you gotta have that impact. But speaking of impact, how do you make a weapon that's also an ability work? Abilities in Warframe historically have had trouble with enemy scaling, which, I mean, just makes sense. I mean, balancing an ability to be good against Steel Path level 170 enemies would mean that the exact same Warframe could destroy anything of a lower level incredibly easily. Not to mention that energy is expensive and can usually be spent on more effective things than just zapping some guy. But at the same time, Exalted Weapons are also weapons. Holy shit, this guy's good. And weapons have historically been quite good at dealing with enemies of all levels due to how you can equip mods on them. Oh my god, we're getting cerebral with this one. So the synthesis... So the synthesis of these two ideas ended up being, initially at least, for exalted weapons to inherit mods from the weapons you already had equipped, in addition to ability stats. This meant stuff like Wukong's Iron Staff would use the mods of your equipped melee weapon, Mace's Regulators from your equipped pistol, etc. This was... okay. But there were two big problems with this approach. One, obviously your builds would vary out of preference. You couldn't really rock a Maiming Slash Atarax build, remember we're hypothetically in the year 2016 right now, and then also have your Exalted Melee weapon be good. Because not every mod that you could equip on melee weapons would work on their Exalted counterparts. For example, Blood Rush could be equipped to your melee weapon, but when you cast Exalted Blade, you wouldn't get any effect from it. Also there was nowhere in the game that told you about this. So even if you crafted a build designed to absolutely min Max your Iron Staff, Valkyr Talons, or what have you, the actual melee weapon that those mods were attached to would either be suboptimal or actually just useless on its own. These weapons then became stat sticks, which according to <laughs> TV tropes, are weapons that are carried by characters that are valued for the statistics they give but are not used directly. An advantage of stat sticks, however, was Riven mods. You see, if you had a weapon that was really bad but had a high Riven disposition, that powerful Riven mod would also donate all of its stats to your exalted weapon. Pretty nice. This system worked. On one hand, an entire weapon in your arsenal was being used not as a weapon, but a platform to maximize one of your Warframe's abilities, but on the other, you were getting to wield an exalted weapon with Riven mod stats. There were some pretty nutty combos going on at the time, but again, it was unwieldy, ill-explained, and a lot of mods just didn't work with exalted weapons, and the only way to know was to either test it yourself or head to the wiki. So, what was the solution to this? Well, DE decided to just go and give most exalted weapons their own equipment slot. This simple fix that admittedly probably took a lot of work on the back end, did away with having to dedicate an entire weapon slot to your fancy laser sword, and now it could be optimized directly, with the game also flat out not letting you install incompatible mods on it. However, this did make exalted weapon builds a tad more expensive. Shout out to Titania and Sevagoth having three total mod setups to use Forma on before their builds are complete. So now everything is fixed, right? Yes. Well, it was called Freak Frame. Well, now, weapons and exalted weapons are separate, which is objectively a good change. It makes the game more straightforward, lets you customize your build to a greater extent, and the exalted weapon modding screens will not include incompatible mods. But, if you'll remember, 
A strength of the stat stick system was that you could just use Riven mods on exalted weapons. This was an incredible power boost, and if you got lucky enough, could take an exalted weapon from a fun gimmick into a genuine room clearer. Now though, the fact that exalted weapons can't equip Riven mods along with the considerable developments in melee weapons recently means that a lot of base melee exalted weapons are suboptimal compared to just regular melee weapons with or without Riven mods. And that's to say nothing of... Ranged exalted weapons, to my knowledge, are doing perfectly okay. I mean, regulators are regulators, Dante's funny little book is over there soloing deep dive Archimedia, and concentrated air was... Ah, my head. But then, there's another type of exalted weapons that we haven't brushed up on. A select few which get to enjoy the best of both worlds. That's right, I'm talking about... Atlas, Korra, Gara, Ash, and Excalibur. These five frames have abilities that still inherit stat bonuses from your equipped melee weapon. You'll notice I said stat bonuses because in addition to inheriting mods, including the combo scaling mods that regular exalted melees can't equip, as well as Riven mods, these abilities inexplicably inherit Incarnon bonuses. Yeah, you know those incredibly powerful stat bonuses intended to buff decade-old weapons up to a viable level of stats, up to when including a 30% additive base crit chance increase on the ceramic dagger in Karnon? Yeah, that applies to all these weapons, producing some, well, insane results. So these pseudo-exalted abilities now have every possible advantage going for them. Combo scaling, arcane enhancements, even base stat increases which are enough to take Atlas's landslide, an ability with basically no crit or status, and, well, make it hit million damage red crits. So like... Now what, right? Melee exalted weapons nowadays are incredibly underpowered and basically require augments that give them a level of unique utility that can't really be achieved with regular weapons and mods. Meanwhile, the cool kids are out here blowing up entire rooms with minimal effort while still using the same old stat stick system that was confusing and vague to begin with. So something's gotta change, right? But this is where I, shockingly, I know, find myself conflicted. The most obvious solution, and one I think I remember hearing DE talk about somewhere, is to simply make pseudo-exalted weapons moddable, like any other exalted weapon. And that would absolutely take away the inequity of the situation we're currently in, but also I feel like we can find another solution that's not just make it so all these abilities are equally bad, and the first choice when replacing an ability with a helmet infusion. Because as they are now, pseudo-exalted weapons are very weak in terms of stats. Like I said, Atlas's landslide has no base critter status without Incarnon support. You take those away and he flat out wouldn't be able to keep up with how strong enemies have gotten since he first came out. So, solutions, right? Let's say DE hits the button tomorrow and all exalted weapons are now at the same level, that level being mid. What could be done to buff all exalted weapons, true and pseudo included? Well, solution one would be to give everything a stat boost, if nothing else. I mean, these abilities are designed to be the apex of the Warframe they belong to. They should be the primary thing that the player uses in a mission. That, coupled with how they already drain energy on use, means that it really wouldn't be too far-fetched to have them equivalent to, or hell, even stronger than the best weapons you can get today. The extent of this stat buff could vary depending on what else is done, such as... Solution 2, introducing some kind of Incarnon subsumption system for exalted weapons? I honestly have no idea how this would work. Maybe you feed an Incarnon weapon of your choice to Helminth to get its set of upgrades on an exalted weapon or something? I feel like this could be a neat way of rewarding investment into the weapon, without having it be too powerful right off the jump, just like with normal Incarnon weapons. And option 3. Introducing unique, exalted weapon exclusive mods. I think this could be a fun way to bring exalted weapons to the current power level of other weapons while also providing some interesting and unique ways to use them. But again, I concede to the great being that is practical use of developer time and resources. So a simple stat buff across the board might just be the most straightforward, realistic, and beneficial option. All that to say, uh, I guess that, mm, uh, war, war, frame never changes. Except for when it does. So in the face of it all, people must change. And my landslide build must also change. Quite frankly, I didn't really think I'd have this much to say about exalted weapons. At first I just sort of wanted to talk about why landslide was so cool, but hey, the creative process is a curse upon us all, right? Hope you all enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you in the next video where we'll do just a little bit more farming.